So what is going on guys, NandaPence93 here with another video, and I've gotten a lot of requests. As you guys know, iPadOS now has mouse capability, and it, you're allowed to be able to connect a Bluetooth mouse, whether through a dongle or directly to the iPad, and be able to use it and have mouse support on this iPad, on this tablet, to give you more of an incentive to switch to it as opposed to using a laptop. And for the most part, I've been using it on and off. But with as the new betas have come out, I'm currently running 13.1 or iPad OS 13.1 beta 3. And everything's gotten a lot more customizable. It's gotten a lot more user friendly. It's gotten a lot more responsive or it works a lot better than it did when the original beta iPad OS came out. It was very buggy. It didn't work too well. Uh, it wasn't fluid. There was a lot of latency issues. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys a video on how to customize and get like the best mouse experience you can with your iPad. Because again, it's not exactly the same and there is some give and take uh, to a traditional point and click mouse and a traditional way you would use a mouse on a, a Mac OS or on Windows 10. So I'm just gonna dive right into it because there was a couple things that kept jumping out at me, right? So for instance, as you guys can see, I already have the mouse connected. Um, I do have a video on how to connect a mouse and a link also average tech guys, how to connect a mouse. It's very, very simple. You just go into the Bluetooth settings um, and I'm currently using the MX Anywhere 2S, and I've been loving this thing. It's about $54, I want to say. Very easy to hold. Uh, again, it's fully wireless, so you don't need a dongle. Only downside is that it is uh, micro USB, which I don't really like, but what can you do? So the first thing that, that kind of came to my attention when I connected the mouse is that you have to turn on accessibility, right? And when you turn on accessibility, you get this little circle thing here, this circle menu which is, I don't want that there. So so the way you get rid of this little menu option, right, is you go into settings, you scroll down to accessibility, touch, assistive touch, and then you go to scroll all the way down, and then it says always show menu, right? So that's turned on. And as you can see, it's still there. If you just toggle this off, it disappears, right? And, and then a lot of people do like the menu, they just don't like that it's always there. So I just set it up and customize it. So when I right click, it shows up and then it goes away. That's a great segue into the next actual reason why the mouse support is getting a lot better is because you can customize the controls, right? And most people th thought that you, in order to customize the controls, you would have to go into Bluetooth, click on the info, and then you can customize from there. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You do have to kind of dive deep into the settings. So you go to, back to accessibility, back to touch, back to assistive touch, and you have to go to devices, and then that's where the settings start popping up, right? So right now, I have the left click is just a normal left click. Right click gives you the menu that I talked about. This third button right here in the middle brings you back home. And what I did do before was you do have these other mappable buttons on the side here. And if you have another mouse, you know, you can map as, as many buttons as you want that are on that mouse, and it's very easy to do so. So right now with button four, it brings up spotlight. So whenever I'm in the middle of any app, I just press the button, type it in if I need another app, and you just press it to go back. And then the other button is just a screenshot, right? So it takes a screenshot automatically, and I did that directly from the mouse. And I'm gonna actually get rid of this because I don't need it. But I love how you can customize it, right? And so those are all the ways that you can actually customize the, the, the buttons and the hotkeys on here, right? And unfortunately, you can't really customize them per application just yet, which I'm hoping will be the case soon enough because there is a, a separate software application that comes with this Logitech mouse, and it does allow you to customize controls based on application you're using. Right now on the iPad, you can't do that, unless I'm mistaken, but I could not find a way to do it, and I haven't read on anywhere that it is possible to customize the controls on the mouse based on the application you're using. So it would be great if I could just use this with LumaFusion and have these be quick keys to cut, um, delete pieces of clips and elongate clips and add transitions and all that good stuff, but for right now, you can't. So right now it just acts like a normal mouse. So another thing that was extremely annoying when it turns when it comes to assistive touch is when you toggle assistive touch on, yes, that little circle usually comes up that you can turn off, but then also, since I don't really understand what assistive touch is, it's supposed to, you know, assistively help you with the touch screen and how you're using it. So when you go in and you try to type something out, right, the on-screen keyboard, even though I have the folio case on it, and it is responsive as you guys can see, the on-screen keyboard kept popping up. And if I were to press this down key button to get rid of it, it stops the typing. So I can't go back into typing. So I did find out that if, to get rid of that little situation, all you have to do is show on-screen keyboard off here, turn that toggle off, go back into whatever you're typing, and then there it is. So you can just go to ESPN or 
whatever the case may be, YouTube, if I can even type, but that fixes that issue. So that was really, really nice. So you can get rid of the, the on-screen menu and the on-screen keyboard and still have assistive touch on, which is a really nice little feature. And then lastly, to customize the actual cursor and the speed of it, uh, all you have to do is go to pointer style. You can change the size of it, as you guys can see, look how big that is, that's as big as you can get it. And if you wanna go back to the small one, which is what I like, to get as precise as possible, you can change the color of it. So you go red, blue, gray. I like to keep it white because it's the most because I'm in dark mode most of the time. And you can actually change the auto hide feature. So if you know the mouse isn't moving at all for 15 seconds, the pointer kind of just goes away. And then when you wiggle the mouse again, it pops right back up. And then you can also change the tracking speed. So right now I have it a little less than halfway, and I like that speed a lot. But if you go all the way down, as you guys can see, look, it's moving very, very slowly. And if I go all the way to the front, it's like almost impossible to control. So you gotta find whatever's comfortable for you. And I kinda like it right here, maybe a little bit more. And that's kinda how I like to customize it. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this helps somebody out. And I've been using the mouse more and more as the betas have been coming out and been releasing and the software has been refined because there's a lot more accessories and a lot more that's going on. I know that Apple doesn't support the full function of a lot of mouses. Like you can get a magic mouse, it works, but the gestures don't really work. You can get the magic trackpad, from Apple, it works, but the gestures don't work. And same thing with this. There's a whole application that goes with this Logitech mouse that you just can't use because um, Apple doesn't support it yet. So I'm hoping as time goes on, Apple begins to support mouses and third-party accessories a lot more and a lot easier. And overall, I love this mouse. So I highly recommend this mouse. I'll link it below. Again, I think I got it for $55, $54. MX Anywhere S2 or 2S, I forget which way it is, but I'll double check and go with that and I'll put it in the description below. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Thank you so much. If you're new to the, if you made it to the end of this video, feel free to leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. And just say in the comment, hey man, I made it to the end of the video. It would really, you know, make me pretty happy because I know a lot of these videos do stretch on a long time and people can't watch the entire thing. They just want to get the information and go, which I totally respect and I understand. But if you make it to the end, thank you so much. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. And until next time, peace.